Um. Uh, what am I gonna do? Oh! Let's see, I gotta find this thing now. Where is it? Soul Leader? No. Macross? No. Dino Thunder? I wish. Two stupid dogs. Funny, but not what I need right now. For a rainy day. Bubble soap. No. Ah, there you are. Finally. One more time, buddy. All right. Quantum power. One last time. <sighs> Hello, Internet. I'm Mark Gunner, the Super Hunter. This past Monday was the first episode of a very, very important franchise of my childhood is the first of an entire series that will come out throughout the entire year. For those who have lived under a rock for the past 20 years, I am talking, of course, about the Power Rangers. Originally, the Power Rangers centered around a group of teenagers with attitude, led by their leader Zordon, a floating head in a tube, to protect the world against the dark forces of evil of Lord Zed and his dark empress Rita Repulsa. The main group of teenagers would use special devices called Morphers in order to transform into the superhuman fighting force known as the Power Rangers. And while themes may have changed with different Zords and powers, the same message came on through and I loved every second of it. So you can guess, as a little kid growing up in the 90s, the Power Rangers were a big part of my entertainment and my life altogether. I loved the Power Rangers. They were powerful. They were strong. They were brave, and the greatest message they ever sent was that no matter whether you have power or not, you can make a difference so long as you try. And that's why I love the Power Rangers. Just pure. Awesome. But then when the rights to Power Rangers were sold to Disney back in 2002, it went right down the shit hole. Thankfully, over the past year, 2010, mind you, the only year not to air a season of Power Rangers, ever since 1993, this is the first year where it's a year without Power Rangers. But now, we kick off 2011 with Saban-owned Power Rangers once again. Power Rangers... Samurai! Before we start this thing off, I have to make one thing perfectly clear. While most Power Rangers seasons start off with explaining who the bad guys are and where the Rangers got their powers, this season actually starts their first episode, what would usually be seen as mid-season. It's weird because this is a Green Ranger-oriented episode, as opposed to actually being where they got their powers, so it's a little jarring. Mike, always keep your guard up. Mike, let me ask you. Hey, that's not fair. You distracted me. Oh, and it doesn't help that the Green Ranger is a total bitch. Either way, it looks like we're getting into some serious Nickelodeon brand comedy. <laughs> and now, my friends, it's come time for the true test of awesomeness for this show. We must now endure... The Power Rangers Samurai theme song. Let us watch.
It seems kind of fitting that Saban retooled the original Go Go Power Rangers theme to fit this new season. Considering now it's theirs again, they can do what they want. It just seems right, and it feels like a rebirth and just a cleansing of all that Disney goodness. After that series of awesomeness, we are treated to literally a minute and a half to introduce us to this season's villains. The leader is Master Zandrid. Uh, apparently he's some kind of fish dude, and they have to wait for water to rise in order for their boat to sail out of the netherworld into what I believe to be the real world. They don't explain it. The Sanzu River can't rise with you standing here. Rofer, you get down to the business of getting those humans to cry me a river. That's... After this, we're introduced to this year's comic relief. What? The ways of the samurai. <laughs> but it's not gonna be easy. Bulk? That's bulk? Oh man! Fat man be in the house, boy! But who's that spiky headed kid? It's gonna be lots of hard work. Uncle Bolt, you got I'm not finished. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed Eugene Skullovich, a.k.a. Skull's son from MMPR, who Skull actually slept with in order to have a son is still beyond me. But I can say one thing for sure that this kid inherited is his spiky hairdo and his comedic timing with bulk. And before any of you ask, yes, that is what they're passing off as the Zord for this season. Last time I checked, Zords don't fit in your pocket like Pokemon. Oh well, back to the plot, it appears that the Green Ranger has gone AWOL and decided the best way to focus on his martial arts is to play Ninja vs. Bear at an, an arcade. That's what I call sensing an attack. Hey Mike, where you been anyway? You're not at school, you're never home, she didn't even come to graduation. Well, I'll give them some points for creativity. While most Power Rangers series usually involve them just living their normal lives and their parents not being involved whatsoever in the plot, never even being mentioned, here they say that we're staying away from them. Well, I'll give them some points for creativity. In most Power Rangers series, the Power Rangers are usually just stashing their morphers in their sock drawer because their parents are idiots. Hell, we never even see parents. There's no acknowledgement that they even exist. Here, they give some acknowledgement and a little bit of an excuse as to why we'll never see them. So, I'll forgive them this much.